Hi, my name is Dr. David Kalsa. I've been a holistic veterinarian for over 30 years. I've written a best-selling book. I lecture internationally and I write for several magazines. And I'd like to welcome you to Cancer Treatment and Prevention in Dogs and Cats, Part 6, which is Diets for Cancer. Now, many veterinarians suggest high-protein diets for their patients who have cancer, and there's a reason for that. Cancerous growths need carbohydrates to survive. The cancerous cell has a different metabolism from a normal cell, and it needs sugar to run. When people are very sick from cancer, they get really thin, and the medical word for that is cancer cachexia. The cancer uses the person's fat and turns it into sugar so the cancer can live and grow. Pretty soon, all the fat is used up so you have a very skinny person. That's why your veterinarian will recommend a high-protein diet with no carbohydrates. They're trying to starve the tumor that your pet has so it won't grow. But there's a bit of a problem with this. This course of action works in dogs and cats who have tumors and who have no extra fat. In some cases, a dog or cat's tumor has been removed and there is no tumor to starve. I mean, there may be tiny little metastasis that have not grown into a real tumor yet, but they don't need much sugar to survive. And anyway, the dogs usually have some fat, so those tiny microscopic tumors can use that fat and turn that into sugar. In most cases, the cancer patient has plenty of fat on his or her doggy body for the tumor to turn into sugar. So if the tumor wanted sugars, it would just use the fat on the dog's body fat. In these cases, which are the majority of dogs out there, you're not really starving the tumor with a special diet. Only in the case of a dog whose tumor, who has a tumor and whose skin and bones with no fat, are you in fact starving the tumor. Yet this high protein diet makes the pH of the body very acidic and cancer grows faster in an acidic environment. Most of the foods that fight cancer, and they're not high protein, listed in my blog, dogandcatvitamins.com. There's too many to list here. Just click on cancer and dogs to find it. But the foods that fight cancer make the body more alkaline. And in this environment, the cancer has a harder time growing. Cancer can't grow well at a healthy alkaline pH. High protein makes the body into an acidic pH where the cancer grows better. It is true that cancer cells need sugars and carbohydrates desperately for their metabolism. It's not true that a high protein diet is the best approach to fight cancer in every case. Quite simply, it's the result of taking one metabolic fact about cancer and not looking any further than that. In fact, eating a diet high in heated, processed, saturated fat and animal protein is the last thing most cancer patients need. A gentleman named Dr. Colin Campbell wrote a book on the most extensive study ever done on cancer. It's called the China Study. Dr. Colin participated in a huge, groundbreaking project which included a monumental study in which 2,400 counties of Chinese people were surveyed for death rates from cancer. This data was then correlated with death rates from local dietary habits. Laboratory research confirmed the massive amount of data that was found in the field. High animal source protein levels in food predispose people to cancer. While the carcinogens that we're all exposed to from the environment do alter our cellular DNA and give the cell the potential to change into a cancer cell, it's the high animal protein in the diet that tips the balance and kicks off the actual transition into the cancer cell. The data is irrefutable, and as much of this research was done on a cellular level, this would also apply to dogs. So what do I suggest as a diet? for the average dog who has cancer and is not emaciated. I suggest a diet of 20% protein derived from organic chicken or turkey, fish or yogurt. So 20% protein from organic chicken or turkey, fish or yogurt can make up the protein. And 80% or the rest of it is well-cooked brown rice with veggies like cooked kale, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, parsley. Butter, olive oil, and coconut oil are the best oils to use in the food and for cooking, and perhaps some ground almonds and finely diced fresh garlic added at the very end. In my best-selling book, Dr. Kalsa's Natural Dog, I've devoted an entire chapter to fighting cancer. I also have many articles on my blog, dogandcatvitamins.com. You'll find more help for your dogs and cats on this blog, and I look forward to seeing you there.